68 years old. Her family claims she's a thief. My sister stole my mom's jewelry and pawned it. And even swiped her mom's purse. False. Show me the video. This was at 4 a.m. going into your parents' bedroom in the middle of the night. I was going to the bathroom in the hallway. With your mother's purse. America's oldest moocher. You've been living with your parents for 15 years. Yeah, probably. We don't know what to do anymore, Dr. Phil. You're treating her like she's an invalid. She's not. I want to know if there's anything we haven't tried. You haven't tried anything. Let's do it. Good show, everybody. Here we go. This is a safe place to talk about hard things. Stand by. We'll count you down. Today's going to be a changing day in your life. Five, four. I am not giving up on you. recent survey revealed 52 percent of young adults in the u.s live with mom and dad the highest figure since the great depression now one of my guests today says she moved back in with her parents temporarily sounds straightforward enough right not so much she temporarily moved back in with her parents 15 years ago and has been accused by her family of not helping with chores, stealing cash from her mother's purse, pawning jewelry worth over $10,000, not paying rent, not working, making a mess, and spending all day in her bedroom drinking alcohol and smoking while watching TV. So how old do you think she is? Her name is Denise, and she is 68 years old. Yeah, you heard right, 68. According to her sister Terry and her niece Alexis, Denise is a jobless alcoholic who's been mooching off of her 86 and 87 year old parents for far too long. My aunt Denise is 100% a mooch. My sister Denise is an alcoholic, a thief, and a liar. Things started to go downhill when Denise moved in with our parents. My sister stole my mom's jewelry and pawned it. It was $10,000 to buy back. Me living in the same house, I hold and hide my private possessions away from her. My parents are in their 80s. They don't need to be worrying about their daughter stealing from them. We had to install cameras in my parents' house. We caught Denise at 4 a.m. taking my mom's purse. We even had her on video bringing strangers into the house. My sister Denise drinks crazy amounts of alcohol. One time she was drunk and she had a TV fall on her. This behavior sounds like I'm describing a young woman, but my sister's 68 years old. My Aunt Denise is a complete hoarder. Denise's room is an absolute pigsty. You can barely see the floor. She has tissues covering her bed. She had moldy cheese and yogurt and all kinds of food in her bed. There are to-go containers stacked all around her room. There were dead maggots. I'm a judge and I see people like Denise in the court system all the time. Our parents would love to move to assisted living, but they can't because they don't know what to do with Denise. Don't put it down on me because I'm doing just fine. But do you understand that you have a problem? My Aunt Denise's behavior has completely broken our family. My sister is drinking herself to an early grave. I'm afraid that this is our last hope. Well, Alexis Terry, good to meet you. Good to meet you. Good to meet you. you just heard Denise say, I'm doing just fine. <laughs> I, That's I'm, typical. Um, I, I'm doing just fine. So she thinks, I mean, she's not working. She's got a place to stay. Three hots in a cot. She's, I mean, she's doing okay, right? She doesn't okay. realize that she has a problem. Why They're, are y'all allowing this? Well, why is anybody, why are your parents, why are you guys? We got the tail wagging the dog here. This is like being lost I, in the forest. Yeah. And you say, okay, who's the most confused, disoriented, least capable person here? And Denise raised her hand and said, okay, we'll follow you. Well, and that's that's why, exactly what you're doing. It's, it's I, almost, I understand. A joke. We've been wanted her out the whole 15 <laughs> years. But my mother just can't kick her out until she has treatment, but she won't go to treatment. So we're in this circle. It Alexis, you say she'll hide in her room for days. Yes, oh, yeah. to the point to where I'm like, hopefully she's still alive. Um, has anyone heard from her? She has a, does not come down, make any efforts to make herself present. Um, she comes downstairs about 4 o'clock in the morning. She'll come down and get her, you know, her food, take it up. 
doesn't take it back down. Um, that's one of the boundaries that we set in our house. No food, no alcohol upstairs. Well, your boundaries are a joke. I mean, we're well, looking I mean, at I know. Room. I know. What you all have said since you got out here is everybody knows that what she's doing is not okay. Everybody knows that what she's doing is not in her best interest. It's not in your parents' best interest. And nobody is willing to do anything about it. So why are we here? I want to know if there's anything we haven't tried. And I also... You haven't tried anything. You, you come up with things. You drew up a, a, an eviction notice. Nothing happens. She's been told, here are the rules. She laughs at that. You do a behavioral contract. She laughs at that. You're right. She steals. She she lies. She drinks. She violates all the house rules. Nothing happens. Terry told my staff that her sister Denise watches my show late at night, and the only reason she agreed to be here today is because she loves me. Well, I'm flattered, I think. <laughs> We're going to meet Denise next. We're going to see what she has to say. I am not a mooch. I've gone into my mother's purse a couple of times. I might take $25. My family claims that I'm a hoarder, but I don't hoard as much as I used to. Monday, she calls her daughter's fiance arrogant, monstrous, psychopathic, abusive. Her daughter claims mom stole her kids. You were in violation of the court order. Yes, sir. So how were your children stolen? You've gotten physical with it. I do defend myself. You guys were in an argument, but you held her down. I didn't hit her. I didn't beat on her. You don't ever put your hands on a woman in anger for any reason ever. That's Monday. Then on Thursday. My 18-year-old daughter is out of control. She's kicked me in the stomach. Your mother said... My Aunt Denise has always shown erratic behavior towards me. I was terrified of growing up. I was hiding underneath the dining room table, trying to avoid her. My sister Denise is an alcoholic. Several years ago, I took her to the drugstore. She stole two little boxes of wine in her purse when I was with her, and I didn't even know it. When I realized that, I was so angry, and I took her to AA that day. Well, Terry and her niece Alexis say that her sister Denise is incapable of managing her own life. No, she's not. Spends her days living off her elderly parents. Yes, she does. And hoarding so much junk, her bedroom has been professionally cleaned five times. Uh, Denise is here, and she denies being a moocher, and she denies being a hoarder, sort of. <laughs> but it doesn't really even follow a logic trail. Listen to what she has to say. My family may claim I'm a mooch, but I am not a mooch. I had four jobs in the last... 15 years. I live with my parents because they have a big house. I've gone into my mother's purse a couple of times. I might take $25. I gave it back to them right away. One time, I borrowed 13000 from my parents to help me with my divorce. After I got my settlement money, I paid them back. My family claims that I'm a hoarder, but I don't hoard as much as I used to. I would hide in my room with uh, a box of wine. I would also hide food. My dad had my room cleaned. They threw everything that was on the floor away. One time, my sister Cindy took me to a restaurant, and why we were at dinner, Alexis was going through my room. I just felt violated. I don't have to drink every day. If I want to have a glass of wine, I'm going to have a glass of wine. I don't get bombed out drunk. The most I drink of vodka would be like two or three shots. Terry is a good friend, but she's an attorney. She can be tough on you. My family is real concerned about me, but I want them to back off. Okay, Denise, good to see you. <laughs> good to see you too, Dr. Phil. <laughs> yeah, you seem real excited. <laughs> I was, yeah. until I heard all that. Yeah. You say you're not a, a, a moocher. Um, do, do you have a job? I was a crossing guard for five years, uh -huh. and I was a flight attendant for 20 years. Uh-huh. How long ago was that? It's been a while. Probably when Daniel was born. I worked till Your 91 boy. or so. Okay, well, this is 2021. I know. <laughs> Are you paying rent? No, but I was buying groceries for the house. Where were you getting that money? I get uh, $750 a month from Social Security and my pension. 
Okay, you've been living with your parents for 15 years. Yeah, probably. I don't know. Denise has told my team that she disagrees with many of Terry's claims about her, so I wanted to take a look at Terry's original email to me to see which claims Denise says are correct. So I pulled out key statements to come up on the big screen, and Denise, uh, let, let's just let you t take a look at these. She says, my sister, who is 68, yeah. is a, a major mooch. So you say that's false. Not a major. You're not a major right. mooch. Okay. She moved in temporarily and has been living with my parents for 15 years. True or false? There were interruptions in that. We're just looking years. at the facts here. Okay. Well, it's true, but I, I left for six months and then I come back. Okay. They have recently served her eviction papers. Which I did not get. My mother handed it to me and I looked at it and she said, if you need to extend it, you can extend it. Well, you just said you didn't well, I mean, get it. I got it, but I didn't read it. Well, I can't help that. <laughs> I know. You, you got it, right? Right. Okay. We have video of her stealing money out of my parents' purse at 4 a.m. while they slept. No, I did not. That's false. Really? I think so, false. Yeah, show me the video. Okay. We'll show you the video right now. This was at 4 a.m. Okay. Uh, going into your, your parents' bedroom uh, in the middle of the night. Oh, I was going to the bathroom in this hallway. With your mother's purse. No, that's not my mother's purse. And then you brought back not your mother's purse? Oh, I guess it is my mother's purse. <laughs> yeah, it seems to be. I didn't remember doing that. You were probably drunk. I wasn't drunk. No. I might have been intoxicated. Oh, we're going to play semantics. No, but... <sighs> okay, if you want... I was drunk, okay? Okay, so you did go in at 4 in yes. the morning, get your mother's purse, and steal money out of it. Yes. Her that, room is disgusting and causes bugs in the rest of the home. That is true, but it's changed. I changed it. This is July before the professional cleaning crew came in. Right. And so you're disaster. living like this, and you say, I, I'm a mooch, no, but not, I, I'm it a was, porter, but no, not that much. No, this was not, not good. Much. This was not good. I can't look at it anymore. Okay, then let's have a seat. <laughs> Denise's son, Daniel, says that driving her 1,500 miles from Texas to meet with me here in Los Angeles is his final attempt at helping his mother before he washes his hands of her completely. We're going to add him to the conversation next, and then I want to point out some other things in this room. Denise, she hasn't been a mom to me in a very long time. Almost every time I see my mom, she's drunk. This past Christmas, she was slurring. She could barely stand up. I can't see this lasting much longer. I feel like I'm going to get a call that she's dead. You say you have to have social media for your career. You don't have a career. You're not an MMA fighter. This is big time to me. I've made it. You are delusional. I'm not saying I'm rich. Yes, you are. You're flashing cash and wearing bling and sitting in a limo. Jeremy is a funeral escort who wants to prove he is not impersonating a police officer. Are you cops? Don't worry about what I am, because I'm a state agent. Get out of the way now! We've gone out of our way to make sure we don't resemble law enforcement. Well, you have handcuffs on you. No, we don't. No, I've seen you arrested with handcuffs, where they've taken handcuffs off of you. My son, Daniel, he's got problems with alcohol. I've been with him when he's offering me drinks. The last time he had some in his truck, they're uh, sparkling water but spiked, and he asked me if I wanted one. I said yes. It's like two different sets of standards, one for him and one for me. I've recently heard that my mom has started to claim that I'm the alcoholic. I have a drink, but I'm also a responsible parent and have a job. I fight every day to make sure that I don't turn into what she's become. I'm joined today by Denise, whose sister Terry and niece Alexis both say her drinking is putting huge pressure on their family, particularly Denise's parents, 
both in their late 80s. And as we just saw, Denise says she's not the only one in the family with an alcohol problem. She says her son Daniel struggles also. Well, he's here right now, and he says the difference is he knows when to stop, which is something that his mother, according to him, has just never been able to recognize or do. My mom has had an alcohol problem as long as I can remember. When I was growing up, she used to drink straight vodka in the kitchen. My brother and I had to fend for ourselves. When I was young, I caught my mom using cocaine. When she was a flight attendant, she tested positive for drugs and had to quit. The Denise that I've known for the last 20 years is a liar, delusional, and manipulative. She hasn't been a mom to me in a very long time. Almost every time I see my mom, she's drunk. I have three young, beautiful daughters. This past Christmas, she begged me to bring them over. From the moment we arrived, I could tell that she was drunk. Her eyes were very squinty, she was slurring, she could barely stand up. My five-year-old was scared to even talk to her. I told my wife, we don't have to see my mom anymore unless she changes. My biggest fear is what's gonna happen to my mom when my grandparents pass away. I can't see this lasting much longer. I feel like I'm gonna get a call that she's dead. Well, Daniel, thank you for being here. You say this is kind of the last stop on the subway for you with your mother. She's either gonna turn something around, she's gonna get some traction, she's gonna do something different. Or you're Absolutely. done. Absolutely. Uh, my mother, Denise, I love you, but... Love you, too. We haven't been on good terms in a long time, and I'm just done with it. I can't expose my kids who are getting old enough to recognize it. I can't, I can't do it anymore. And yes, I do have a drink, but I'm a responsible adult and know when to say no and know when to stop. And yes, I have offered you a drink before, because I knew if you didn't have one, you wouldn't stop shaking. We don't know what to do anymore, Dr. Phil. He's taken her to treatment many times. It lasts for a while, and then it's back to the same old, same old. Do you think that you're exploiting your parents? No, I haven't tried to ever exploit Do my parents. Do you think you're adding stress to their lives? I don't know. I think Alexis adds a lot of stress, too, but we're not talking about her. I think we all have stress in our life. This is the best I've seen her in a long time, well, and yeah. she puts on a good show. But let me tell you this. She is... She has continually gotten worse and worse every single year. It's gotten to the point where she used to put it together for a few days a year to be able to be around the family events, weddings and things. In the last few years, that doesn't happen anymore. She, yeah. can't, she can't even function enough to be well, at a you know, wedding I, or things like that. Listen, I gotta tell you guys, people ask me sometimes if I think problems are as simple as I make them out to be. I don't think problems are simple at all. I think oftentimes problems are very complex. They're very layered. It's the solutions that are simple. And this is, this is not a complex situation. This isn't a close call about what to do. I could do this in a drive-by. I could just be, I could just drive by and roll down the window and say, here's what to do. I mean, this is not a close call. It, 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 it's just that y'all are so close to it that it apparently looks like a blur to you. It's like you're doing the drive-by. But I, I wanna talk to Denise's parents, uh, who are the ones hit hardest by their daughter's destructive habits. And you agree that you, you live a self-destructive lifestyle, right? Yes. Gotcha, one thing we've agreed on. We're gonna meet the parents <laughs> after the break. My daughter Denise has stolen jewelry from me. I've lost my 25th anniversary ring and my mother's wedding ring. We even have to hide food from Denise because she'll take it upstairs. So she was In 2009, my mother passed away from alcoholism and cirrhosis of the liver. Denise and my mom were inseparable. My mom was found, passed away by Denise. I never have done what your, your mother did. I never take drugs. My mom didn't do drugs. She did Vicodins. You do anxiety like pills with your alcohol. It's very frustrating that Denise still displays this issue with being an alcoholic, even despite the fact that her sister has died from alcoholism. I've invited family members Terry, Alexis, Daniel, and Denise to sit with me on this stage today to discuss claims that Denise is emotionally and financially using her elderly parents, Tom and Joyce, both in their late 80s. Now, you might be asking yourself, why don't her parents just kick her to the curb? Well, it's not as straightforward as that, at least 
not for them. My daughter Denise has been living with us approximately 15 years. She has stolen jewelry from me. I've lost my 25th anniversary ring and my mother's wedding ring. Terry and I had to go to the pawn shop to the sum of $10,000. I bought those back. I have money in my purse. It's usually missing. That's why I have to hide my purse. Her bedroom has always been a mess. You could not see the floor. You could not see the bed. I have told her many, many, many times, don't take food upstairs, but she does. We even have to hide food from Denise. This is all the Christmas goodies. Denise does not pay rent. She does not pay utilities. We have given her thousands of dollars. I'm 87, be 88 next month. Joyce is 86. We're not going to be here much longer. And there's not going to be anybody here to look after her. Back in August, the decision was made. We need to give her an eviction notice. Nothing has ever come of it. Dr. Phil, can you help us help our daughter? Well, I certainly can. And joining me via Skype from Texas are Denise and Terry's parents, <laughs> Tom and Joyce. Tom, Joyce, how are you today? Fine. We're okay, Dr. Phil. Thank you. I'm so proud to meet both of you. You're concerned about Denise, and you're concerned about what's going to happen to her uh, when someday the two of you are gone, correct? Right. That's, that's correct. I mean, I, it, she can't function. I mean, she can't go out into the world. I mean, I'm sorry, but she just can't. And, I'll, and I'm afraid for her, too. She's actually stolen your jewelry and pawned it, and you lost some of your most treasured items, correct? That's correct. And then you guys had to go back and, and buy them back, right? Yep. Exactly. Yes. Well, we found some of the receipts that added up to $3,808.50. So a lot of money, no matter what anyway yeah, you look at it. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's not everything. Those are 12 of the receipts that we found. You, you say, I, no, I've not exploited my parents. I, I'm not adding stress to their life. This was... Come on. This, I was in a very bad state. I had supported my ex-husband... For two years, he, Don't care. he owed me 60 I was depressed when I moved in with my Don't parents. Care. I didn't have any money. And yes, I stole, but I was going to get it. I, my intention was pawn it, get some money, and then pay them, get it out, and give it back. Blah, 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 I blah. I know. Blah. So what do you want me to say, Dr. Phil? I mean, I tried. I, I want you to acknowledge the fact that, yes... I, I have said, exploited well, yes. my parents. Okay, I have stressed yes. my parents. Yes. I've put pressure on them. And that needs to stop. That yes. needs to change. And I've been trying to change. And I've been trying to do things around the house, like cook meals and things. That's and then, a lie. <laughs> no. That's I a cooked lie. a That's big a old That's pot of soup. I cooked pork chops. You are more of a burden. Matter. You are more of a burden than you do I cook meals tried, or clean up. Daniel. I ask you, what have you done today? And you'll say, I've been downstairs cleaning. I call my grandma. She says, I haven't seen her in two days. It's the truth. You're not being honest with yourself and or everyone else. Okay. D didn't you recently just steal some food that they were hiding? I didn't steal the food. I turned the oven on and they started. I didn't know the food was in there. Because they were hiding it from you. <laughs> what are you putting under your I arm? I don't know. That's so she thinks that they don't know that she's taking it upstairs. That's why it's being hid. <laughs> but the camera's right there. But Well, I, that yeah. does not very appetizing. <laughs> <laughs> Let me but, be very, very clear here. Uh, and I, I, I say this to your parents, and I say it to you. I'm getting ready to tell you what's going on and what needs to happen here. Okay. I can explain this to you. I can't understand it for you. You got to do that part on your own. We'll be right back. <laughs> on the way in today, we're in LA. I, I thought it was just interesting to just take some pictures. These are pictures of homeless people on the street. They have more order and cleanliness <laughs> than you do in your room. You are homeless. Closed captioning provided by... Abdominal pain or discomfort? Bloating? You may be the one in ten living with IBS. Ask your doctor about non-prescription IBGuard for the daily dietary management of IBS. IBGuard. Daily Gut Health Guard.
Well, I, I'm devoting today to a family who say the selfish actions of one member is causing anguish among all of them. Now, it's interesting, when I have interviewed, we, we've interviewed everybody here, and not one of them has a negative word to say about you as a person. I know. They give you hell on your behavior. Yes, they do. But none of them dog on you as a person. And the fact that they have driven 1,500 miles during a pandemic <laughs> from Texas, I know what that trip is. It's hard. You've it's got hard. people that care enough about you to come here. So you, I feel picked on. You're not being picked on. You're being picked up. You're being lifted up by these people. They care enough about you to make great sacrifices in their own life. We always tell her that we're all here to help her if she would show us one ounce that she would try to get better. But she never does anything on her own to try and get better. Well, inertia is tough to overcome. Uh, you know, when, you, when you're stagnated in your life, it's, it's real tough to overcome that. And, you know, Tom and Joyce are saying, look, I, I don't want her to be homeless. Like I said, she is homeless. She's just homeless in their home. You're living like a homeless person. I, I, so much so that on the way in today, uh, we're in L.A., I, I thought it was just interesting to just take some pictures. These are pictures of homeless people on the street. They have more order and cleanliness <laughs> than you do in your room. It's true. This That's is true. not three blocks from where we're sitting right now. You are homeless. I just worry about her a lot. I worry about her well-being. I worry about not seeing her days upon end. And I just don't want her to end up dead, to be completely honest with you. I don't believe that. You don't believe what? What she just said. Which part? I, have, I When her mom died, I was there for her. I took care of her like she was my own daughter. Joyce, what do you want to say? I can't say that she had anything to do to take care of Alexis at all. She wasn't even taking care of herself. And, yeah, she expected Alexis to take her here and take her there. I'm sorry. Um, but, okay. Yeah. Okay. Here's the observation. I, I got ready to tell you what I think you need to do, and you interrupted me to tell me that you're afraid if we make a change that she's going to die. I just want her to realize she has a problem with alcohol. And she doesn't realize to this day she had, that she has a problem. That's true. I do. I do acknowledge. That I think I have that she can survive with treatment. I think if she survived tomorrow, if we said, "Here's your apartment," she couldn't survive like that. And Dr. Phil, please yes, tell us what to do. Yes. No, I'm just, I find we don't it, want to interrupt see, you. Anymore. I can't tell you the truth if you're not ready to hear it. We're ready to hear ready. it. I'm. I'm done making excuses for her. This yeah. is it. This is it. I mean, we I mean, came. Did, here what did, to I, hear what did I just say? Tell me you heard me. I heard you. What did I say? That you are trying to give us guidance nope. and we're, all we're doing you're is making listening. excuses. <laughs> I said, I can't tell you the truth if you're not ready to hear it. This family has questions. I've been trying to answer them. <laughs> um, I'll try again after the break, but we're running out of break. Look, you don't like your life the way I it don't. is. I don't like it. I was going to be 69 years old, and I'm saying, what do I do with myself now? Yeah, exactly. And by the way, I'm not getting ready to send her to rehab. She's done that several times. That that obviously doesn't work. And she even made demands about that in case I had that on my mind. She called my producing team six days ago just to tell them that if she did get sent to rehab, which is not going to happen, she would leave because she has other appointments that she deems more important. Here's what she had to say. I just wanted to tell you, on February the 1st, I have appointments with my breast surgeon and my oncologist at 9.30 and 11. Because if I go to a rehab place, I'll leave to go to my appointments because I love my doctors. He's shaking his head no, but I have the appointment cards and I have the phone doesn't numbers. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because I, I wouldn't waste that resource on you okay. at this point. They may not learn from past behavior, but I do. So I'm, I'm not going to continue to 
do the same thing over and over and expect a different result. So that's not happening here. So let me tell you what does need to happen. Tom and, and Joyce, y'all are afraid that she's going to be homeless. And I, I understand that. But you need to understand that she already is homeless. She's just doing it in your home. And if, if she was even living in a shelter, she would have a higher standard of living than she does right now in your home. Because when you look at this bedroom, when you look at this situation and circumstance she's living in, they would not enable her in that way. She would be required to do things that you don't even require her to do in your own home. They would be better stewards of her than you are being in your home because cloaked as love, you are allowing her to self-destruct in order to make yourselves feel better. All of you have allowed her to continue to unravel and self-destruct because you don't want the anxiety of her being on the street and the guilt that you would experience if something bad happens and she dies on the street. Yes, so you're not doing this for her. You're doing it so you feel better. You need to impose some ironclad standards with her. The first thing that needs to happen is that bedroom's going to get cleaned up. Her space is going to get cleaned up. She's going to get cleaned up. And then you add a behavior a week. She should be going to an AA meeting every single day. She should do 90 meetings in 90 days. Yep. I took pictures of the floor in her bedroom, and I, I, and I, I counted the, the wine boxes <laughs> piled up in the floor. I counted over 20 of them. That needs to stop. Now, her bedroom today is better than it is in this picture, probably because she knew she was coming here. It's not it, by her doing. It was, it was because the last time was the professional cleaners, but she's also been to AA, but then even her sponsor stopped picking her up because she was manipulative to them, I believe. But the only other thing is, is that all any treatment has medicated her and released her, and they've never ever done a long-term counseling or help of any kind. So I don't know how we make her take her medicine or how we make her go to AA. You don't. We can't. You don't. Then we're right where we are. No, I you mean, aren't. <laughs> no, you aren't. This. Let me finish. Okay. Okay. You need to set a date certain that she is out. She has income. She can get into housing. And if she has to go to a shelter until she gets there, that's her choice. There are ironclad rules. If she violates them, that's her choice. You choose the behavior, you choose the consequences. If she chooses not to go to an AA meeting, then that's on her and that is her choice. She's gone. And it's not a matter of a sponsor picking her up there the, the, she's not theirs to raise she didn't have a driver's license she doesn't need a driver's well, no, license Alexis wasn't living there my mom couldn't drive i mean like then I, we, take a bus i mean there's no bus no from bus. their house to aa she could walk if she was healthy then walk. walk to the <laughs> corner and take a bus yeah. call a cab that's a not bus. your yeah. problem. This is a grown yeah. woman. She's flown all over the world. This is a flight attendant. She's been in more cabs than you have cars. <laughs> she knows how to get where she is going. You're treating her like she's an invalid. She's not. Okay. When you watch this back, you're going to hear me telling you that the only way to change this is to set some ironclad standards that she meets or doesn't, and then you're going to see that you sat there and made excuses for her. Well, her AA sponsor didn't pick her up. There's not a bus. No, she I can't took her to this. her first AA. I mean, I, I said go to AA, and but I can't drive her to AA every day. That's all I'm saying. I mean, That's I apologize. Part but of the excuses. And I, no more excuses. I just want to know how to make it happen. It's not your job to make it happen. Okay. It's your job to be aware that that is the requirement. And if she violates it, she's gone. I agree I with agree. Dr. Phil. You I have, agree with you. We've threatened consequences, but they've never followed through. So this is, this is it.
it's going to be followed through with. If you don't do what you need to be doing, you're going to be on the street. And if your parents won't do it, then get a conservatorship and do it for them. You have to protect them so they aren't put in this bad situation. And you shouldn't fight this. Oh, I'm not. You, you should do everything you have to do. I'm going to arrange through Doctor On Demand, which is a company that, that we actually founded. I'll set up 10 sessions immediately for you to okay. have your own personal therapist away from everybody else. Nobody else can listen. Nobody else can hear. And you can talk about setting these goals, identifying the steps necessary to get there, to do the things that you want to do. Yeah. You need to get off the booze and get on your feet. I know. And you can't do that living in a hovel inside your parents' That's house. Right. You're a grown I woman. I agree with you. And and stop walking all over your parents okay. and pretending you don't. I will. I'll, I'll, I'll do better. I'm sorry, Mom and Dad. I'm really sorry. I'm so blessed to have you. And I appreciate oh, everything you've you done for me. I know we love you, but I want to see my Denise back. I, you. I want to be back. Okay? All right, we're done here. You will not believe what I have to say next. You'll get weekly updates, live strategies, and exclusive video that you won't find anywhere else. Plus, on DrPhil.com, you can see sneak previews of upcoming shows. Log on today. The thing I love about America is it's really about choices. You, you have a chance to make choices. You, I mean, you, you do. You can choose to do A or you can choose to do B, and you, you don't, you're not stuck on a track. You can change and do whatever you want to do. And these people have been letting this woman unravel for 15 years, and the reason they're doing it is because they don't want to worry about her out on the street. They're doing this to make themselves feel better, not for her, for them. Yeah. That just yeah, how's, how's that working? drives me, nope, well. that just drives me crazy. <laughs> is anybody responsible for your choices once you're an adult besides yourself? Absolutely. And, uh, no, the biggest question that we have to ask ourselves is really, what do we want out of this life and what are we willing to settle for? That's what you have to ask yourself. And are you willing to make the hard choices to get what you want? Because the difference between winners and losers is winners do things losers don't want to do. Ask yourself during the pandemic, what kind of choices are you making? How are you spending your time? That's a question you got to be asking yourself. What choices are you making, and are they good for the rest of your life, for the future? So, anyway, anybody got any questions or comments? Sanji, go ahead. I think parents are stuck in their ways, and I'm afraid that at their age, they're not going to be able to change it. Well, I, I think you're right. These three that were here have to help them, and it's elder abuse. They're, these people aren't sufficient. I don't think they have the strength and the wherewithal to fight back, so they have to have that support. And, you know, Terry, she's a judge, for God's sake. She knows how all this stuff works. That's why I say she, could, she, can, she can arrange a conservatorship if that's what needs to happen to get her out and on her feet. She has Social Security. She has a pension. And she's old enough she can get in assisted living herself. It's not like there aren't choices here.
I'm stunned by this. Yeah, Ellen, number 22. Ellen? How does the son, though, deal with the guilt? I mean, if something does happen, do you know, I mean, how do you overcome that feeling of guilt? <clears throat> what he's going to do is say, I did everything I could. I got professional help. We drove 1,500 miles to see Dr. Phil. He followed up with professional support from a PhD level therapist. Uh, we had a plan, we worked the plan, and then she sabotaged it. We did everything we could, and I'm at peace in my soul about that. If you can't say that, then you do have a problem. So I, I get that, but that's what's kept them from doing anything up until now. So they have to do it. I want to thank all of my guests today. And if you at home want to have your own doctor on demand, which is great because it's teletherapy or telemedicine, you can go to Google Play Store or the Apple App Store and download the Doctor On Demand app. Uh, for more information about today's show, log on to drphil.com. I've been going to Facebook at night and talking about these and answering y'all's questions. Also, I'm on Twitter and Instagram, and I pop up on TikTok from time to time just having fun. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to Robin's podcast, I've Got a Secret. If you haven't subscribed yet, you really are missing out because she discusses all of life's little secrets with amazing guests like John Snedeker, a clinical director and male sexual dysfunction expert. So you're talking sex, huh? <laughs> yes. Okay. Uh, Robin and John do have a fascinating conversation about everything from performance anxiety to Viagra.